When you think about the brand Alfa Romeo, there are five distinctive elements which made Alfa Romeo some of the world's most desirable cars. They all had distinctive, emotional Italian design, state-of-the-art engines, and the chassis rested on a perfect 50-50 weight distribution, unique technical solutions, and the best weight-to-power ratio. These are the indispensable ingredients for creating an Alfa Romeo. The skin that wraps over the internal mechanical parts of the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio was designed with three things in mind. Proportions, simplicity and surface quality. In order to balance the weights perfectly, the engine and the mechanical parts are arranged between the two axles of the car. This is why the Giulia has very short overhangs front and back, a long bonnet and front wings, a retracted passenger compartment settled on the drive wheels and muscular rear wings which visually mark the point where the power is unleashed onto the road. What all this does is it creates a very generous wheelbase, the longest in its category in fact, but contained in one of the most compact bodies. If you look at the Giulia from a straight side view and compare it to four doors, sedans in the same class, the Julia's body could almost fit within an ellipse. One of Alfa Romeo's key ingredients when designing a car is simplicity, and to me, an Alfa should be built up by curvatures and round volumes intersected by a few sharp, distinct lines. The Julia Quadrifoglio does this well, but at the same time, I can't wait to redesign the front graphics and give it more definition and identity. The simplicity aspect to me is lost with the Giulia GTA. The GTA crosses the line and ventures on into the popular world of overstyling. If I could pick one design that I prefer the most amongst the Giulias, it would be the Quadrifoglio. Because to me, this has just the right amount of additional styling cues over the standard Giulia. It's subtle and functional and complements the rest of the car. What I want to do in this video though is give it a facelift to make it look more modern, give it a stronger chiseled face without rearranging the graphics too much. I have an idea where I want to take this redesign so let's jump into Photoshop right now and let's see how this redesign is going to turn out. <laughs> As I said earlier in the video here, I think Alpha design is defined by round, almost organic shapes and surfaces with a few sharp key lines that intersect these round surfaces. And that's what I want to implement in the front of this Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio here, is to give it a bit more of a definition in the face. I want to have some more structure in the face and I want all of this new, all these new structured lines to come from the main alpha graphical element which is the triangle in the front. So I want all the new shapes and lines to stem from this one particular element. I think the Quadrifoglio is the perfect mix of performance parts to the standard Giulia while still keeping the traditional alpha lines and smoothness in the design. And this kind of gets lost with the GTA with all these additional pieces sticking out of the car and especially the, the these black pieces for example around the rear fender. To me it takes away more than it adds to the design. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let this redesign roll, so sit back, relax and enjoy this transformation of this Julia, the face of this Julia here. And then I'm gonna come back at the end of this video and explain all the changes and the reasoning behind them.
thing here with this redesign is that when you start, this is a, a this is just a, a a joy to redesign a car like this because you're starting with something that is already very very beautiful and and, and clean in its styling. But what I wanted to do with the fascia of the Julia here is to give it a few more distinct sharp lines that kind of builds from the triangle in the front so you can see that all of the lines the lines that i added on the hood and the lines that i added on top of the headlights and underneath the headlight as well they all kind of converge in the point lower point of the triangle and that gives the triangle kind of a a, a uh, symbolic power that all of the the, the shape of the car starts with the triangle of the Alfa Romeo. Another important change that I wanted to make was to make the headlights. I want them to be smaller than the original. I think this, the original headlights on the Julia are a little bit too big for the front face itself. So I want to shrink them down, give it a bit more of an aggressive look, and then we can have some air intakes underneath the headlights and also that little chiseled edge at the end point of each headlight in the corners that could also have some aero function if you wanted to have that. And in the lower part of the car, what I wanted to do with the side intakes is to give them also more definition and have them follow the, the main air intakes that you have. I want to have the same kind of curvature to the outer ones as well and not just have them be on there in a random curvature that we kind of have with the original design as well. So these are the tiny changes that I wanted to make. But honestly, I think it made a world of difference if we look at this, which I'm going to show you in the end of this video, the before and after which we switch back and forth between those two designs. I think this really turned out exactly the way I hoped it would. enjoyed this redesign just as much as I enjoyed having fun with this Julia right here. I'm the Sketch Monkey. If you enjoyed this video just as much as I enjoyed making this Julia redesign here, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And feel free to browse around all the hundreds of redesigns I've made so far on this channel. There are so many videos that you can go and check out that I think you will like. I'm the Sketch Monkey, thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.